Shove it, man! Oh man, shove it, squad. On Ring of the Hawk, we always listen to the fans. That's why this time on Ring of the Hawk, Sean O'Hare will be stepping up to the ring. Shout out to Scott Ballantyne, Prankster163, and Eric Stuff, who have all been threatening to smack me one if I don't make this video. By the way, I've made a slight adjustment to the ratings chart. From now until the end of time, if a wrestler is in the F zone, this is now called the shove it zone, and they could shove it from now until the end of time. Garrett Bischoff and Black Rain, you're on the wrong side of the line. You guys suck. And of course, if you know a wrestler who could do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comment section, Jack! Match one, Raw. Well, it's not really a match, but it's a badass moment. Team WWF and men are be teaming up with Team WCW. Our man's first TV appearance on the main show. As you can see, he's the WCW tag champion with his partner Chuck Palumbo. They are the natural born thrillers and they were all over WCW towards the end of the programming. Team WCW and Team WWF will be teaming up tonight even though they hate each other. And they will be taking on the 10 man ECW team. Or at least they're supposed to be. But O'Hare slaps Bradshaw causing a mass brawl. Good start for him though making him the focal point of the angle. Team WWF clear the ring and out come the 10 man ECW team. The ECW guys get in the ring and the bell rings so technically it's a match. Team ECW clears the ring and then the WCW guys go to get in. But then they reveal that they're in cahoots and the alliance is formed. A 15 on 5 beatdown starts and Sean O'Hare hits his finisher, the F5. It's strange seeing someone other than Brock Lesnar doing it. I can't really grade this match but it's a pretty cool moment. Match 2, Smackdown. Bradshaw, one half of the WWF Tag Team Champions with Farouk versus Sean O'Hare, one half of the WCW Tag Team Champions with Chuck Palumbo. Bradshaw starts out hitting a big DDT and rolls Sean up for a two. Both men spill out to the outside and Bradshaw slams Sean into the steps. Bradshaw follows this up with a shoulder block from the top rope and gets a two count. Chuck Palumbo cheats and this allows Sean to slam Bradshaw for a two count. Sean O'Hare batters Bradshaw with his knee and then hits a spinning kick. Shades of Rob Terry right there. O'Hare is extremely impressive as he flawlessly jumps to the top and flips over Bradshaw landing on his feet. Bradshaw boots him for a two. Sean tries to splash Bradshaw who catches him and launches him overhead with a fall away slam. Palumbo gets involved again and O'Hare rolls Bradshaw up but it's still not over. He goes for the Rob Terry special again but Bradshaw dodges it and hits him with the clothesline from hell to end the match. Impressive proper debut on Ring of the Hawk. I hope this is a sign of things to come. I really enjoyed it. The debut gets a C. Match 3, Invasion 2001. The APA, Farouk and Bradshaw versus Sean O'Hare and Chuck Palumbo, the natural born thrillers. Although they aren't called that in WWF programming, so I need to shut up. There's no gold on the line in this match, just pride. And Bradshaw has a lot of that. He's getting the better of Palumbo, so O'Hare starts booting him. Our man gets the tag and scores a painful looking knockdown on Bradshaw. Bradshaw fights back with a back suplex. Farouk gets the tag and tries another suplex, but O'Hare lands cleanly on his feet and hits a knee lift. Such an impressive athlete so far. Chuck Palumbo fights Bradshaw for a while but doesn't really do very well, and O'Hare has to hit a boot to Bradshaw in the head. O'Hare gets the tag again and gets a two count on a high impact slam. All the moves in this match look painful, they look like they'd leave a normal man in a hospital bed for a week. O'Hare once again has to save his teammate, who's getting dominated. Can Palumbo actually do something? O'Hare slams Farouk into the steps. Shawnee then takes Farouk down with another knee lift for a two count. Our man takes some damage finally as Farouk hits him with a sloppy spine buster. Bradshaw's now back in the ring and he's a hawk on fire until O'Hare kicks him in the face again. Palumbo and O'Hare hit a double team move on Bradshaw, but it doesn't do much because merely seconds later, Bradshaw hits the clothesline from hell on Palumbo for the free. I really enjoyed this match to be fair, but Palumbo was pretty much useless. The match gets a C. Match 4, Smackdown. Matt and Jeff Hardy versus Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare. Again, this match is just for pride. Let's see if Sean can get his first win. Sean starts out trying to catch the Hardys, but he's not quite fast enough. Palumbo is getting destroyed by the Hardys. This guy is useless. Sean O'Hare gets involved and flattens Matt Hardy himself and takes the tag. Taz is on commentary and he's a heel here. It's giving me 2013 aces and eights flashbacks. O'Hare hits a hammerlock slam and a kick to Matt Hardy for a two count. Chuck Palumbo loses the advantage for his team as normal. The Hardys hit poetry in motion on Sean O'Hare. Matt Hardy then hits the twist of fate and Jeff goes to the top to hit the swanton bomb. 
For some reason, the referee is more interested in getting Matt Hardy out of the ring. Chuck Palumbo hits a super kick, and O'Hare drapes his arm across to get his first win on the show. Why does it feel like a loss, though? I expected so much from this match, but it just winds up getting a D. It should have been better considering the men involved and the size difference between the two teams. I thought our guy was going to dominate. Match 5, SmackDown, WCW tag title match. The champions Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare versus the Brothers of Destruction with Sarah. It doesn't really go well. Well, what were you expecting? Kane hits a power slam on O'Hare. Looks like it's almost over. Taker hits a spine buster on O'Hare next, but he kicks out. Not sure quite what he was going for there. It doesn't look like a normal move that you do. Taker goes old school on O'Hare. Man, O'Hare's not doing great here, but imagine if it was Palumbo in there. This match would have been over already. They brawl on the outside and then Palumbo dives on him out of nowhere. It's chaotic and O'Hare hits Taker with a steel chair without the ref seeing. Kane takes both of the guys out on his own. He then hits a sidewalk slam on O'Hare. Kane tries to go for a double choke slam, but it doesn't work. Taker makes the save and the thrill seekers get double choke slam for the free. We have new WCW Tag Team Champions. Another match that annoyed me. I don't think Palumbo and O'Hare got a single offensive move in. They look so weak throughout this invasion. Match gets a D. Match 6, Raw, cage match, rematch for the WCW Tag Titles. Palumbo and O'Hare versus the WCW Tag Team Champions Taker and Kane. I wonder if the Thrill Seekers would be able to hit a move tonight. Kane slams the door into O'Hare's face so it doesn't start out too well. Kane picks him straight up and hits the choke slam. DDP and Canyon are on the ramp watching the destruction. Anyway, no one covers Sean so the match carries on. Kane hits another choke slam but the cameraman completely misses it. Sean's knocked out. This match is just designed so Undertaker and Kane can send a message to DDP and Canyon as they'll be fighting them at the next pay-per-view. Undertaker hits the last ride on Palumbo. Sara climbs into the ring because DDP's chasing her. None of this is about O'Hare and Palumbo. The brothers make a double pin to retain the titles. The match gets an F. Zero offense again. In fact, it was worse than the last match. At least they smacked someone with a steel chair last time. They look completely harmless in this match. Match 7, Raw, 12-man tag match, Team WWF versus Team Alliance. Scott tries to go for the worm, but Sean clotheslines him out of his boots. It's just chaos, really, everywhere. Everyone just tries to kill Spike Dudley. Plumbo and O'Hare knock the Big Show out of the ring. The match ends when the Big Show hits the choke slam on Tommy Dreamer. It was a fun match, but again, our guy did absolutely nothing. Almost everyone hit their finisher, but Sean O'Hare is continuously treated like a jobber in this invasion. The match gets an F from our point of view. And that was obviously the thinking behind the scenes as well, because Chuck Palumbo was kicked out of the Alliance and went on to team with Billy Gunn. Sean O'Hare carried on wrestling on the B-shows even after the Invasion storyline ended. He was even sent down to the WWE developmental territories because some people behind the scenes said he couldn't work properly. It's now 2003 and Roddy Piper's in the WWE. Him and Sean O'Hare are feuding with Rikishi over a coconut, emulating what Piper did to Snooker. He introduces Sean as the wrestler of the new millennium and he's here to train him. Match 8, Backlash 2003. Sean O'Hare comes out with a new look and he's taken on Rikishi. If you ask me, it's an upgrade. Rikishi starts out throwing Sean into the steps and the table. Rikishi gets him in the ring and hits a Samoan drop. I hate it when smaller wrestlers use this move. It should just be safe for Samoans and fat guys and Rikishi is both. Piper distracts Rikishi and O'Hare hits a super kick. Rikishi then eats a couple of clotheslines but kicks out at two. Rikishi gets put in a submission for a while and then Sean O'Hare knees Rikishi in his big head. O'Hare goes for the Rob Terry special but misses and then ends up in the corner, the one place you don't really want to be in a Rikishi match. O'Hare fights off the stink face by pushing Keish away. Piper gets in the ring with a coconut and then both men hit kicks at the same time. Not seen that one before. Both men are down and Piper keeps getting in the ring with coconuts. Rikishi is annoyed and smashes Piper in the face with the coconut. O'Hare uses a distraction to stack Rikishi up on his shoulders to hit a slam for the free. Not bad, not bad. Piper was pretty annoying. I give the match a C. I guess he can't be doing the F5 now because it's 2003 and Brock Lesnar is here. Hawk Hogan, sorry, <coughs> Mr. America is being terrorised by Mr. McMahon who is obsessed with getting him to admit that he's Hawk Hogan. Sean O'Hare is the chosen man to take out the Hawk. If Sean wins the match, Mr. America will have to take a lie detector test. If he loses, Roddy Piper will be fired. Match 9, Mr. America with Zach Gowan versus Sean O'Hare with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Match starts out of a test of strength that O'Hare wins. Hawk Hogan, sorry, sorry, Mr. America beats O'Hare from pillar to post. Piper has to get involved to help O'Hare get the advantage. 
O'Hare keeps kicking Mr. America and he seems to be well on top in this match. O'Hare almost gets him to pass out, but Mr. America hawks up. Or at least he tries to, but O'Hare kicks him back down again for a two. The feathers really start to fly now though, as the hawk continues to hawk up. Mr. America hits the big boot and the leg drop. Unfortunately for him, Piper makes the save. Mr. McMahon comes out with lots of police officers. McMahon tells the officers to arrest Zach Garren, who isn't a contracted wrestler and is trespassing. The Hawk tries to save him, but the referee counts him out of the match while this is going on. He tries to make it back in, but he fails. Sean O'Hare officially holds a victory over Hawk Hogan. Of course, this is not a clean victory, but when it comes to the HAWK, you're the one that's usually doing the J-O-B to him every night and day. The crowd dug it anyway, it gets a C. Match 10, Sean O'Hare accompanied by Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, his music's improved now. And he's taking on Chris Benoit. Well, that explains the dip in quality in this video. It's not going to be on the network now, is it? Quite sad to think that all of these three are now dead and two of them hang themselves. Sean O'Hare pounds on Benoit, but Benoit takes O'Hare off his feet with a dragon screw. O'Hare fights back with a big kick on Benoit. He almost gets the Wolverine to tap and then defaults to booting Benoit, one of his signature moves. Sean picks Benoit up and instead of a scoot slam, he just launches him across the ring. O'Hare tries to hit the Rob Terry special, but Benoit dodges it and plants him with a DDT. Back on their feet, Benoit hits a released German suplex for a two count. Benoit then hits a big net breaker for another two. Piper gets involved, so Benoit chases him. O'Hare misses with another kick and Benoit puts Piper in the crossface. O'Hare kicks Benoit in the back of his head while this is going on and quickly rolls him up for the free. So in two weeks, O'Hare has beaten Hawk Hogan and Chris Benoit. But how much do either of these victories truly mean when he didn't dominate the matches and took cheap victories? I know I'm being boring here, but it's another C. It's nothing incredible, it's nothing bad. What do you want me to say? Match 11, Smackdown. Eddie Guerrero with Tajiri and an SUV versus Sean O'Hare with Rowdy Roddy Piper. This match started last week because Sean O'Hare wouldn't give Eddie his tag team title back. Piper's acting like a complete drunk here and he's hitting the bottle harder than I hit Oliver Peace after that last video. Sean starts out throwing Eddie Miles into the air. O'Hare looks even bigger in this match than in the last match. He beats Eddie up in the back and when he gets up he boots him again. O'Hare goes for the Rob Terry special but Eddie kicks his other leg out. Eddie then hits a low drop kick but O'Hare fights straight back. Eddie goes to the top to hit a drop kick and this sure takes O'Hare down. Eddie goes to the top for the frog splash but Piper distracts him and he misses the move. When he gets up O'Hare hits him with his finisher. Piper spits more tequila over Eddie. Wow, three big wins in a row for O'Hare. I wish they could give his finisher a name. I know it probably has one, but it's not been acknowledged on commentary. I dug this match though. It was too short, but I'm giving it a B. I really enjoyed it. Match 12, Smackdown for the WWE Tag Team titles. Sean O'Hare and Rowdy Roddy Piper versus the champions Eddie Guerrero and Tajiri. Eddie and Sean start out at a fast pace and Eddie springs over the top rope. Tajiri hits O'Hare with a handspring elbow, which doesn't take him off his feet, but the kick sure does. Piper breaks up the tarantula attempt. O'Hare throws Tajiri across the ring and then sweeps Tajiri's legs out. O'Hare tries to throw Tajiri again, but he counters it. Piper and Guerrero then square off as the crowd wakes up. O'Hare boots Guerrero whilst he's distracted. Eddie fights back with a drop kick to the face. Tajiri gets Piper with the mist and then Eddie finishes him off with a frog splash. An entertaining match. I can see why they put Piper with O'Hare. He is admittedly struggling to get reactions from the crowd, but Piper's like a heat magnet. But shut up or I'll smack you one, Marky. That doesn't matter, because behind the scenes, Piper appeared on TV running down the wrestling business, and this caused him to be fired after that last match. Match 13, already in the ring, Rhino versus Sean O'Hare. He whacks Rhino out the ring before he's even got his coat off. O'Hare batters him around the ring and then chokes him with a wire. The APA then randomly run out to hand them invitations to a barroom brawl, but O'Hare doesn't like it, so attacks them. A nothing match, it didn't really even start. Match 14, final match, Vengeance 2003, bar room brawl. It's just a bunch of jobbers and lower mid-carders. I love the set though, it's pretty funny. There's even an Easter bunny that is Aaron Rex. Sean O'Hare is one of the last man out. He just looks like such a star compared to most of the guys in this match. Sean looks like he's laughing whilst all this wacky stuff is going on. He's just having a good time being at the bar. He has been reported to be a bit of a bar room brawler outside of work. Sean isn't even fighting in this match, he's just stood around laughing and drinking. O'Hare gets some pool cues and then stands on top of the bar. He does eventually do something and takes out the acolytes with the cues, and then he knocks out Nuncio. Brother Love has taken out everybody for some reason and smashes a vase over O'Hare. 
Matt Hardy tries to take out one of the Bashams for a table, but it doesn't break. The Acolytes win the match because they're the last two men standing. This leads me to think that Brother Love eliminated Sean O'Hare in his final match. But someone may be able to verify that for me. If true though, what a joke. A fun match overall. O'Hare had a good little flurry of offense at one point, but that was it. He gets a D. And that's it for his WWE run. After all of that, he was sent back to developmental and released. He was involved in countless bar fights and trouble. But as a special on Ring of the Hawk, match 15, Butterbean versus Sean O'Hare. Oh god. Oh no. Shut up or I'll smack you one! So the question is, can Sean O'Hare do the JLB to the HAWK any night, any day? Ha ha! You had all the potential in the world, Jack! You even beat me in a fluky way! I might keep you around, carry my bags and you can stay! So Sean O'Hare gets a C. No amazing matches really, but nothing terrible either. He was clearly a good wrestler who didn't connect well with the fans. Yes, some of his promos were cool, but when he was in the ring, the fans didn't seem to react to anything he did. Sean's obviously no longer with us after being found with a rope tied around his neck. He'd been battling depression for years and was clearly a troubled guy. All of us at Ring of the Hawk wish it had worked out better for you, Shawnee. And just remember, at least you're not in the shove it zone.